Hello, everybody. Uh, that's Vincenzo Piccolo from the Dermatology Unit of the University of Campania, Luigi Lambitelli from Naples, Italy. And today I'm going to give you some information about dermoscopy of uh, pyogenic granuloma. Let's see a case together uh, just, to, just to start. Pyogenic granuloma is usually a, a red the papule or nodule on the skin of uh, a young patient, usually affecting uh, uh, children on the face. Um, it is uh, named also uh, as teleangiectatic granuloma or reactive uh, lobular angioma because it is considered a form of uh, uh, angioma developing after uh, uh, small trauma, insect bites. Uh, that's why probably it's most commonly uh, uh, seen in, uh, in children and infants too. Um, when it's located at the face, like these patients, we have many differential diagnoses uh, on, the, on a clinical point. Uh, but dermoscopy may play a very important role in, the, uh, in helping the differential diagnosis. In this case, uh, uh, at dermoscopy, what, what we can see is just this red homogeneous area corresponding to a large lacuna, um, so large dilated vessels, at uh, histopathological examination. In this other case, affecting the chest, the clinical appearance is uh, quite the same, but at the dermoscopy, we see just uh, some different features, such as multi multiple red homogeneous areas and not a single one uh, like we saw before. And these white red lines that uh, are at the periphery of each lacuna. This is another very common dermoscopy finding seen in uh, pregenic granuloma, and uh, we should keep in mind it because it's very uh, common in this kind of benign tumor of uh, uh, children. Sometimes, and this happens more in adolescents or adults, we can see pyogenic granuloma on the palmoplantar uh, region. In this case, the thermoscopic appearance uh, changes. We can't see the red homogeneous lacuna. We can't see the white red line, but what we see uh, mostly it is, is, is this white color at the periphery, that is not pathognomonic of the pyogenic granuloma. We can see it also in uh, equine poroma or uh, Kaposi sarcoma, but you see it, uh, together with um, uh, clinical appearance and history of the patient, it can be very helpful for the diagnosis. Sometimes patients come uh, with this finding, uh, mostly children with ulcerated lesion, bleeding tumors. We know that it's a pyogenic granuloma, but uh, we can say it just looking at dermoscopy because when we see an ulcerated node, we, 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 we cannot express a um, precise diagnosis. In this uh, very important but old paper about dermoscopy, dermoscopy of pyogenic granuloma, uh, the Spanish group of Zabayos and uh, its co-workers, its co-workers, um, displayed which are the most common dermoscopic features of pyogenic granuloma. And as you can see in the schematics on your left. Uh, the white color, the red lacuna, and the white red lines are the most associated with uh, uh, pyogenic granuloma and uh, in general with benign tumors. Uh, whereas we can see uh, with a high rate also vessels in pyogenic granuloma that are not so typical of this kind of tumors, but they, they can be a confounding dermoscopic features. So um, at the end of the paper, 
the author always recommend a histopathological confirmation of um, uh, biogenic granuloma by taking a shape biopsy or incision by incisional biopsy or excision of the tumor because this kind of tumor can be a simulator of a melanotic or hypomelanotic melanoma and also in children of Spitz tumor, uh, Spitz nevi, or a typical Spitz tumor. Let's see a few examples together. These apparently similar lesions uh, uh, that present in the same way, like uh, a red nodule of the skin, have two completely differ different uh, um, dermoscopic appearance. Um, here we have a spitz nevus on the right with dotted or glomerular vessels and uh, reticular depigmentation. And uh, uh, on the left, we can see a pyogenic granuloma. For these reasons, very important to excise lesion and have an histopathological confirmation because if we go back to clinical picture, the clinical appearance is very, very similar each other. This is another example, a striking example, where we have two ulcerated nodules. On the right, we have an ulcerated nodule of the plantar area, and on the left, an ulcerated nodule of the leg. What we see at dermoscopy is very similar. This uh, red lacuna, central red lacuna with the peripheral colorate, but while on the right we have a pregnant granuloma, on the left we had an atypical Spitz tumor. Once again, I repeat, histopathological confirmation is mandatory in pyogenic granuloma in order to exclude the hypomelanotic uh, uh, melanocytic tumors. To conclude, pyogenic granuloma is um, a very common uh, react form of reactive angioma that is mostly seen in uh, children, often presenting as a papule or nodule, red colored face, chest, limbs are the most common uh, uh, sites. Clinical differential diagnosis, although it can be very easy, sometimes includes uh, a melanotic melanocytic tumor such as Pitts nevi, atypical Spitz tumors, uh, juvenile xanthogranuloma, uh, pyelomotricoma, angiogratoma, and other and other common benign tumors uh, of uh, children or malignant tumors uh, in adults such as uh, uh, melanoma. The most common dermoscopic findings include red lacuna, first of all, that can be single or uh, multiple, white red lines delimiting the red lacuna, a white peripheral col colorate, uh, some vessels and ulceration. The latter are not, um, you see, uh, typical of benign tumors, but sometimes we can find them uh, also pyogenic granuloma. And the last but not least is that histopathological confirmation is always recommended in order to exclude melanocytic lesions. That's the end. Thanks for listening.